A study in Nature magazine reported that Yellowstone is releasing a about 60 tons of helium from underground stores each year, an amount hundreds, possibly thousands, of times more than expected. Researchers with the U.S. Geological Survey estimate that enough helium comes up to fill one good year blimp every week. Yellowstone National Park's geysers, hot springs, fumaroles, and other hydrothermal features spew out a collection of gases, from deep within the Earth's steam, carbon dioxide, methane, neon, argon, and helium. Research on the chemistry of Yellowstone's gas emissions is driven by a need to better understand and monitor both the deep magmatic system and the overlying hydrothermal system. This research shows there are three primary sources of gas at Yellowstone, the deep magmatic system, shallower crustal or rock-related sources, and the atmosphere. The gas that ultimately discharges at the surface may contain components from all of these sources. Studies of gas emissions are complicated by the fact that some gas components are found in more than one source. For example, helium and carbon dioxide are emitted by magma at all volcanoes, but can also be released from crustal rocks under the influence of heat. So how can you tell the difference between these sources of gas? One method is to determine the isotopic composition of some gas components which can tell the story about gas origins. For example, prominent degassing features at the mud volcano thermal area north of Yellowstone Lake include large churning pools of muddy water, and a long-lived superheated fumarole the hottest vent in the park at 237 degrees Fahrenheit. Hydrogen sulfide makes up about 0.15% of the gas emissions and accounts for the strong rotten egg odor that permeates the air. Helium concentrations at Mud Volcano are only about 0.002% of the gas, but isotopic analyses of the carbon dioxide and helium readily confirm the link to the magmatic system. In fact, the helium isotopes show that the Mud Volcano gases have the strongest magmatic signature of any of Yellowstone's thermal areas. This thermal area is located well within the Yellowstone caldera, so the strong connection to magma is reasonable. Scientists have determined that helium gas released from volcanoes may anticipate the detection of magmatic movement even before those movements can be detected by seismic activity. Researchers have been using gas emissions to forecast volcanic eruptions for at least 35 years, but they usually focus on carbon dioxide, the second most abundant gas, after water vapor in volcanic eruptions. Helium, a noble gas, is a better candidate for tracking and forecasting eruptions, because it doesn't react with rocks or groundwater and microorganisms don't consume or produce helium. Because of these properties, helium has been considered by geochemists as an almost ideal geochemical indicator. Measuring the flow of helium in soil and water gives clues as to when magma underground is moving and how close it is to the surface both important factors in forecasting a volcanic eruption. Helium is used as a critical tracer throughout the Earth sciences, where its relatively simple isotopic systematics is used to trace degassing from the mantle, to date groundwater and to time the rise of continents. The hydrothermal system at Yellowstone National Park is famous for its high helium-3 and helium-4 isotope ratio, commonly cited as evidence for a deep mantle source for the Yellowstone hotspot. However, much of the helium emitted from this region is actually radiogenic helium-4 produced within the crust by alpha decay of uranium and thorium. Helium monitoring systems are an additional direction for scientists in strengthening the surveillance programs at many volcanoes worldwide. Unfortunately, lagging technology and resources will be the two largest challenges in continuous monitoring. Please subscribe, like and share.